Hi everyone. So let's now discuss about throughput accounting ratio. Uh, what is throughput accounting ratio? It is used to calculate uh, the amount of profitability in terms of ratio that we will be able to generate from our product. Uh, if this ratio is greater than one, it means we will be able to recover all our costs, including our factory costs, our operating costs, as well as the direct material costs, which will be incurred on purchasing the raw material. Now, once we will calculate this ratio, then we can even decide whether we should continue this product or not. Uh, because if the throughput accounting ratio turns out to be less than one, it means that this product will not be able to generate enough return to recover all the costs that will be incurred on making that product. And as a result, it would not be beneficial to continue making that product. So let's refer to the calculation part now, where first I will tell you how to calculate the throughput accounting ratio, what is the formula, and then we will uh, take one example from the CPE specimen exam, which will help us to understand the, the ratio itself. So first of all, if we will try to note down the formula which is being used to calculate the ratio, throughput accounting ratio. It's basically kind of a return on investment type of a, a thing that we are going to calculate. So the throughput will first of all, we'll take the throughput as per bottleneck resource okay uh, why as per the bottleneck resource uh, because as we discussed earlier that our objective is to maximize the throughput maximize the return with respect to the bottleneck because this is what is holding our output which is holding our uh, profitability so the ratio would be linked with the bottleneck resource uh, so it means it, it's also important to first identify the bottleneck and then be able to calculate the throughput accounting ratio. So once you have the throughput uh, per bottleneck resource, then we will divide it with the operating cost or factory cost. As we were discussing earlier, that uh, throughput is only a difference between selling price and direct material cost. So throughput is effectively covering only the material cost other than that, and which is also the direct material cost is also only assumed to be the variable cost in the short term. Other than that, all other operating expenses, even including direct labor, would be assumed to be a fixed cost. So uh, operating costs will also be calculated per the bottleneck resource, uh, which would have been identified already. So this operating cost you could also refer to as your fixed cost factory cost uh, effectively this is what we are assuming it as a fixed cost and when we talk about the throughput so effectively when you would have calculated the throughput per bottleneck resource as we said that throughput itself is selling price minus direct material cost so the direct material cost which is considered to be the variable cost is already part of throughput and the remaining cost is fixed cost, which we need to recover. Uh, same like the contribution concept, we have that the contribution uh, should be greater than the fixed cost to be able to earn profitability. So here again, the concept is that the throughput of the product should be greater than the operating cost or fixed cost. If this is the case, then it means that the ratio is greater than one. And if ratio is greater than one, it means we will be able to recover our cost and hence earn profitability. So uh, one thing that we have to also take care of because it, it is possible that, as we said, that uh, the material cost is associated, associated with the inventory value. So it is possible that selling price and direct material cost would both be given in the question in per unit terms. So for that, uh, we have to look for the bottleneck time available, bottleneck time which is required to make one unit and similarly it is possible because fixed cost is a period cost so it is possible that the fixed cost is given for the whole period in that case you need to identify the bottleneck uh, resource how much time is available for the bottleneck resource for the whole period and for that maybe you have to do some quick calculation in the exam or question because sometimes the examiner might give you that you know uh, the factory can operate for eight hours a day, let's say six days a week, and then we have 50 weeks a year. And then adding to it, maybe that 
there is more than one machines available. So whatever number of machines, let's say five machines are available. So you can do a quick calculation that the bottleneck resource, uh, you know, how much could be the capacity, the working capacity of that bottleneck resource. This capacity would also determine your output as well, by the way. So there will be a quick calculation that you may have to do because the fixed cost, it would have been given as a period cost if this is the case. So once you have, then you can effectively calculate the throughput accounting ratio. And as we said that throughput accounting ratio, if it is greater than one, one as in 100%, uh, if it is greater than one, it means we will be able to earn profit. And if it is less than one, it means that this product is going to incur a loss. And if it is equal to one, it means this product could achieve the break-even point. Now, if the budget is showing a throughput accounting ratio of less than one, then uh, from the decision-making perspective, from the financial aspect, obviously it's not beneficial to continue ahead. But before taking this final decision, we have to review the whole supply chain. We have to assess whether we can improve the throughput accounting ratio. And if possible, we should try to improve the ratio. If not, then obviously, then the last resort would be to discontinue the product. So how the question is how we can actually improve if a product is expected to have a throughput accounting ratio of less than one, then what steps we can take to improve the throughput accounting ratio? Uh, one of the steps that we can take is maybe to try and increase the selling price, but uh, it may not be possible. We earlier discussed about target costing that uh, there could be a competition. Uh, it could be that our competitors are selling uh, and are selling uh, at a reasonable selling price and our uh, selling price is already competing with the other products in the market. So it may not be possible for us to increase the selling price. The other option could be to look for the ways to reduce our direct material cost, maybe to uh, buy uh, material in, in uh, bigger quantities, but at the same time, we have to avoid the just uh, inventory because the concept we will be using is just in time. Um, so we have to look for the ways how the material cost could be reduced, maybe by availing some discount, alternate suppliers, alternate material, if, if there is any possibility that we can reduce our direct material cost. Then we should also think about the ways how we can try to reduce our operating cost because if the operating cost will reduce, uh, again, the throughput accounting ratio will improve. And so if we will keep on looking at the ways how we can improve the throughput accounting ratio, it is possible to turn a potentially loss-making product into a profitable one by identifying the ways, you know, how we can improve our throughput accounting ratio. So uh, throughput accounting, in short, it would help an organization to improve the profitability, particularly in a situation when they are uh, facing a bottleneck resource, a resource, an activity or a process which is holding them up, which is not allowing them to maximize their return or profitability. Uh, by improving the throughput, uh, we can improve our overall profitability. So this is what we have from throughput accounting. Our next topic will be covering environmental management accounting, which is also uh, going to be our last topic on syllabus area B. So till that time, take care, stay blessed, stay safe.